is the place that we humans call home. It's a very beautiful place with staggering variety. Gorgeous landscapes from mountains to rivers to oceans, a staggering variety of different species uh, from redwoods to swallows to beavers to spiders and of course seven billion other humans like you and me, perhaps the weirdest species of all. And then look above us, look at the sun. It's the battery of life here on Earth. But our sun is just one of perhaps a hundred billion stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is perhaps just one of a hundred billion, maybe two hundred billion galaxies in the universe. So how did things get to be the way they are? How was the universe created? Why does it work the way it does? Why are stars so big? Why are you and I so small? Why do we find ourselves in this particular part of the universe on this tiny planet buzzing with life? Why are humans so powerful? What does it mean to be human? These are wonderful questions and they've been asked by people in all societies and they've also been asked by a lot of people with great expertise. Geologists ask them, biologists ask them, astronomers, physicists, historians, anthropologists. What we want to do in this course is to take the expert answers and try to blend them into a single coherent story that will explain how everything came to be the way it is. How we fit in and where perhaps everything is going. These questions fascinated me even when I was a kid because they made me feel I was part of something absolutely huge and quite wondrous and I wanted to know more about it. I remember I once bought a telescope in a junk shop and I set it up in England in our backyard and I started looking at the stars and suddenly everywhere I looked I was seeing double stars and I thought I've discovered something brand new and I told a friend and my friend immediately looked skeptical and said where did you get the telescope and I realized what had gone wrong you don't buy a telescope in a junk shop you need a telescope needs to be very precisely made if you're going to see the skies properly nevertheless I still managed to see some magical things even with that clunky telescope for example I saw Saturn with its rings looking like kind of a glowing washer around a bright shiny ball bearing it was very beautiful indeed so what I learned from this was that these are great questions, there are great answers to them, and asking them can take you on a complicated and long and wondrous journey. Take a look at this timeline. It shows my own journey through time. And what I've done is I've placed on it events that seem important in my own life. We can think of them, if you like, as thresholds, crucial turning points in my life. For example, at the age of three months, I traveled to Nigeria. I went to Canada, where I met my wife. I went to university, I trained as a Russian historian, and I got my first job in Australia. All those things were important. But now I carry three passports because I've traveled so much. And the trouble is, I'm not really sure in a sense what country I belong to, or in a sense, who I am. I was never really content, therefore, to understand just the history of one country, or even to teach the history of one country, say Russia in my case. What I wanted to know about was the history of humanity as a whole. Now if you think about it, that question forced me back. If you want to know about humanity, you have to ask about how humans evolved from primates. You could push that back, ask how primates evolved, back and back and back, until eventually you're talking about the origins of life on Earth. And once you're doing that, why not ask about the origins of the Earth and the whole universe? Now, these questions are huge, but they seemed really important to me because asking them gave me a sense of understanding what I am and what it is that I'm part of. Eventually, I realized that all human societies have asked these same questions, I think for the same reason as I asked them, but their answers are incredibly diverse. Some say that the universe has always existed. Some say it was created very recently. Some say it was made by the gods. Some say it arose out of a sort of cosmic mush. 
And then what the stories do is they go on to tell about the origins of, of the stars, of the sun and moon, of the mountains and seas and rivers, of plants and animals, and of course, of you and me. Big History is a modern version of all these stories. It uses the best information that we have available in our society. But of course, it's not perfect. New information keeps appearing, and as a result, we have to keep adjusting the story and improving it. And there are many areas to which we don't have perfect answers. We're really not sure. So the story keeps changing in small ways, and that, frankly, is one of the things that makes it so exciting. Now, you've seen my personal timeline. You can think of it as a sort of personal origin story, and you can all write timelines of your own. To some of you, I guess it may seem pretty long, but if you want to look for a long timeline, think about the history of the universe. That timeline is 13.7 billion years. Now let's just take time out to get your mind around that figure. If you were to count numbers, each number a second, and you counted up to a million, how long would it take you? Well, the answer is it would take you about 11 and a half days. If you were to count to a billion, it would take you a thousand times as long, which is about 32 years. And if you were to count to 13.7 billion, it would take you over 400 years. Now, that's a huge story, but that's the story we're going to tell in this course. It's a fantastic story. It's got lots of twists and turns, lots of unanswered questions, lots of fascinating ideas and stories in it. One of the things we're going to really focus on is the idea of increasing complexity. Over 13.7 billion years, what we see is that gradually there appear in the universe at threshold moments, as we'll call them, new things, more complex things with entirely new qualities. And we'll focus on eight of these threshold moments, and they culminate in today's world. The last threshold is the creation of today's world, and that is one of the most complex things we know. So, by the end of this course, you'll have surveyed the whole history of the universe, and you'll know how you fit into it. So, let's get started. <laughs>